Hi guys, welcome to CYC. My name is Nathan Hayes, and today I want to talk about that feeling when everything feels a bit fake, feels a bit weird, disconnected, just distant, kind of beyond reach. Now we usually feel this with people, but it can be in other areas as well. And to explore this idea, I'm actually going to use a really contemporary topic of driverless cars. I know it's a weird segue, but if you give me a moment, I think for the people that don't understand this or haven't felt it, it'll kind of just let us get to grips with it a bit better. So, if you haven't heard already, driverless cars are becoming a thing. Now, they won't be mainstream for a while, but during that in-between phase where you'll have driverless cars and people-driven cars, the person in the driverless car is going to have to monitor the road because some people driving their cars won't be good drivers and they will take risks and it's actually hard to teach computer what risky driving is. Like when we're driving along and we see some guy overtaking and go, like flying in a rush, whatever he's doing, we know to kind of keep our distance. It's hard to teach a, driver, uh, a, a car that, hard to teach a computer that. So in the in-between phase, you'll have to monitor the road. Now, that brings its own problem. Tesla have, in their cars, they've put um, monitors on the steering wheel so that, you know, their thinking is, if your hands are on the steering wheel, you are focused on the road. But that's kind of, that's not a guarantee. Then there's other cars uh, that have uh, cameras facing inward and they actually monitor your face. They even monitor your eyes to make sure your eyes are directed forward. But that actually has a couple of issues as well. And this isn't a new issue when you're trying to use human beings as monitors. We've actually run into this issue when like radar came along first. When you had like someone, you're like, sit by this machine and look for a dot. Their attention span didn't last much longer than 10 minutes, pretty much. Because humans just aren't built to monitor. We're built to engage and to interact. We are not built to, again, monitor. That's not what we're for. And that, I believe, is where that feeling of everything being fake kind of stems from. That inability to just monitor, that need to interact. Because as a culture, as a people, we're not that interactive anymore. We're not that interconnected anymore. And if we're to learn anything, people as, like, if you're to learn anything, you can read the books, you can read the theory, and yeah, it might make you better, it, like you're trained for it, but it's not until you get your hands on it that you kind of believe the knowledge that you have. You're just like, oh, so it does work. And like, oh, so these smaller details that I didn't really think about or I hadn't learned or won't, weren't told to me, okay, they're important as well. And you'll kind of find ways of making it even better or whatever. But regardless, it's not until you get your hands on it that it's real. And think of like any baby, like when they get like a new toy, they squeeze it to like see if it's squishy. They want, they feel it because they want to see what texture it is. They bang it against the floor to see if it bends or breaks or if it's durable or whatever. They want to taste it. They want to smell it. They want to see if it makes a sound. They want to know everything about it because then they can trust it. Then they can say, this is what this thing is because they're trying to make sense of the world. And we're all the exact same. When we're dealing with people, we want to know the details. We want to know where their priorities are, what's important to them. We want to know all of this. And the way that people do this tends to be through shared experience and shared difficult experiences, trials and stresses and pains. Like there's a reason that in the army, they consider themselves brothers and sisters to each other because they are constantly going through trials. They're going through difficult situations. And when you're doing that, you get to see all the filters stripped down, but you get to see which filters go first. Like what kind of considerations, oh, he's like really happy and jokey and all the rest. But like when shit hits the fan, okay, he goes into like this gear. Ah, oh, okay, so that's the kind of, that's the level under it. And the rest is just an act or it's not an act, but it's kind of, it's the way he likes to present himself. Fair enough. No issue with that. But you won't see that unless you're stressed out. You won't see that unless you have those like shared experiences or shared pains. And then you'll trust each other. And you'll know when to trust each other because people aren't trustworthy in every situation. You might trust someone 
to lie for you. And then you might trust someone else to be like brutally honest. Whatever it is, different people will have their strengths and weaknesses. And you kind of need to know the priorities to figure that out, to make, to know that. And if you don't know that, you don't know how to interact with them. You don't know what's really there. You don't know how far you can push it or how far not to or whatever it is. You don't know what's actually there. And that's that feeling of fakeness, of distance, of whatever. And the reason that it's more prevalent today is because we don't have as many shared pains anymore. We don't have as many shared experiences. We don't starve for food. Our partners and our children tend to survive childbirth. And there's no kind of massive wars that bring us all together as a country. That's only been a thing in the last generation, in the last, like, say, 60 plus years, something like that. It's only really this lifespan that's going on at the moment that doesn't have anything that kind of like you can see the pain and you can see how they deal with the pain. Now, I'm not saying if you want to trust someone, I'm not saying to inflict pain. What I am saying is that you need to find another way of trying to get to this lower level of understanding someone. If that's the feeling, if you're wanting something more genuine, something more honest or deep or whatever, you need to find a way of getting to that lower level, either by like discussing ideas or kind of doing exercises together, doing like challenges together, go climb St. Patrick or go do different stuff. But that's what I'm telling you. You have to do stuff with the person, your online friends, whatever it is, your acquaintances, your work colleagues, whatever it is, whatever your circle comprises of, whoever's in your circle, doesn't matter. You have to do stuff with them. You have to have some sort of challenge that both of you face together. And then you'll kind of understand them a bit more. And then you'll feel that you kind of get it, that they are real, that there is more past just the filters, just past the kind of, geez, the weather's grand today, isn't it? Past those kind of pleasantries, you'll get past it and you'll know who they are and that will give you the sense of comfort. Because without that understanding of each other, it can lead to more than just loneliness, although that is the main body of the emotion. But it can also lead to kind of feeling disoriented or feeling a lack of trust for people in general because we don't know how people are working. It can even lead to exacerbating that feeling of not knowing yourself because you don't have as many blueprints around you to kind of judge yourself off of and to kind of understand yourself through. But the good thing or the positive or the, the silver lining in that, it can be a really dark cloud, but the silver lining is that for people that feel that way, who, for people who are going through that struggle, it means you're looking for more. It means you're looking for something more genuine, more, you're, you're looking to understand people. And people will like that about you. That's kind of a good quality to have. It might be a difficult quality to have if you're in the wrong kind of environment or if, you're, if you haven't established those connections. It could be a struggle. But it's not a bad thing that you're looking for those connections. It's not a bad thing that you're looking for that deeper understanding of other people. There's a great quote from Jim Jeffries that is way too deep for that comedian. And that is, he said that if you want to get anything done, anybody that wants to get anything done cannot be a glass half full guy. If you want to get shit done, you have to come into the room, see the glass, and you have to ask, why the fuck isn't that glass full? I'm just like, I love that quote. Now it goes, it tells you that you have like an eternal struggle. If you want to get stuff done, you're never happy. You're never satisfied. And it also says that like, once you are happy and satisfied that you kind of start to slow down a wee bit. I don't know. I just love that quote. So if you're feeling that feeling of people are being fake, that you don't understand them, that you don't have those connections, Ask yourself why the fuck your glass isn't full. Ask yourself why you don't have the connections. Why not build the connections? And by building them, how do you build them? You go out into the world and you do challenges together. So 
Next time you're kind of like with people and you're feeling a bit fake and you're kind of like, ah, oh, crap. Go through your day and interact with people. Tell them that whatever they're wearing is nice. Whatever you notice, just like, geez, that's really nice. Ask them how they are and try and remember little details and just like really try and ask them how they actually are, not just the kind of like, I'm grand and then leave it at that. Try to dig a bit deeper. Or maybe just try and offer something yourself and just see if they interact with it. Not everyone's going to respond to this and that's fine. You're trying to find out, you're trying to find your niche, not their niche, you're trying to find your kind of like, because not everyone's able to have that kind of deeper connection or that deeper conversation. Not everyone wants to, not everyone's kind of willing to, maybe they're not at that stage yet, maybe it's just not part of their character or whatever. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if it's part of yours, you need to know that. You need to kind of understand that about yourself and you need to move forward, ask why the fuck isn't your glass full and go try and fill it up. Go try, interact with people. Be nice. I'm not saying being an ass. Be nice, of course be nice. But just try and get rid of that resistance to interacting. We all want to kind of leave each other be and like, we don't want them in our business and we don't want to be in their business. If they're wearing something funky, it's like, yeah, sure, let them wear it. Grand. I'm not saying anything against that. Again, this doesn't have to go with it or it doesn't have to go against that. It's just that, okay, they're wearing something funky and it's just like, hey, by the way, clothes are a bit like, they're cool. I like it. You can still say that. I think we've kind of, we've a fear of saying that now. We've a fear of saying, you know, your makeup's looking good or that your shirt is cool. It's, you're filling out, like, you know, you're getting whatever, like whatever the comment is, we're kind of afraid of it now because we're, we don't want to hurt people's feelings and we don't want to, we feel kind of nosy because <laughs> no one wants to be nosy. To be respectful, to be sophisticated, to be decent is to kind of mind your own business nowadays. And that doesn't work for everyone. It mightn't work for you. It doesn't work for me. I need to kind of poke at people. I need to be like, so what are you made of? What are you doing? What's your kind of project at the moment? What's the, what struggle are you going through at the moment? Because I just want to understand who you are, like what you're doing. If you're not doing anything, I love you to pieces, but it irks the shit out of me. <laughs> it just does. I don't get, I don't get it. Anyway, enough of me. But it's not a bad quality. Just for anyone going through that feeling that everything feels fake, it can be a hard place. But just know that is probably a sign of a good character, a good personality, of a good, of the need to build a good community. And no one's going to hate you for that. So that's it for me today, guys. Uh, instead of asking you to respond to the video, I want you to leave in the comments below what your current struggle is because I think it'd be kind of cool if you got to leave your struggle and you just get to see that everyone struggles. There's very few people in the world that don't have some form of struggle in their life. And most of those people are just between struggles. They're just taking a breather because we're built to struggle. Humans are built to struggle. Sad fact, but it's kind of cool as well. So anyway, leave that in the comments below. Uh, hopefully I will see you next week because we're still trying to stick with that weekly schedule even though I messed up last week because like I've, I have a research project at the moment so it's a bit of a struggle but <laughs> we're going to stick with the weekly schedule and we'll review it after a while so thanks for watching guys I appreciate it I'll see you next week bye guys